Hi, it's Neil with NeilsVideos.com, and I'm going to just kind of give you some ongoing commentary on this game of Townstar that I'm playing. As you can see in the upper left corner, this is Neil Town 4. And what I'll do is maybe every 5, 10, 30 minutes, every hour, something like that, I'll just tell you what I'm changing in the game. Like I said, I'm not an expert in the game, but I think I have a pretty logical mind. I'm a fairly good trainer, teacher and video maker. So I just want to show you the thought processes I'm going through. So since my first video, I finished this little power plant over here, and that will provide three energies. You can see that here in just a minute. As soon as, right now I'm making uh, petroleum. So it gives you two out of two energy. If you're making gas, this little guy here will give you three out of six energy just because he's uh, positioned next to it. This guy can also create energy or batteries by, cr by converting two crude oils, like if I hear, if I click craft, you can make the batteries by using wa one water and two crude. And so right now I have three windmills and they're pretty far apart. So they're making all the batteries I really need right now. You can see my battery supply is kind of full. This is one of the things I kind of hate about the game is I have to keep turning the water on and off because you need water. Well, this gets one water drum because I'm next to this uh, water pump here. But when I make electricity, it says one out of two waters. So I always need to have a little bit of water in my warehouse. I, I always, almost always have at least two warehouses because otherwise you can end up with like 20 energies in one and no room for water. So it's just something you have to be very careful to make sure you have a little bit of water in your warehouses. The next thing I started doing is paving some roads. So what I do is I just kind of look around all my streets or my dirt roads and I say, oh, there's a lot of people running by here. So wherever a lot of people are running or walking, I usually go ahead and try to pave those roads first. So like in this part of the game, I may only pave two to six of the, of the little blocks to be better roads. And then I'll wait till I have more money later in the game and then I'll pave more. And usually by the end of the game, you'll have maybe 80% or more of them paved, but it costs, uh, you know, 10,000 and a lot of wood to do that. You can see I got a road problem here. I got a windmill in the middle of my road. Actually, it stopped. That's what I was waiting for. Is when I wanted it to have nothing in it, so I'm going to stop it. And unfortunately, I'm just going to have to destroy it and rebuild it because I wanted my road to go through there. See, I see a lot of people having to walk around it, right? They, they like walking on the roads there. So let's build a little dirt road here. And then I will rebuild that windmill. Now, the question is where? If I put it here, I have to pay 15 grand to remove a stump or a tree. If I put it here... I think that's the better place right now. By putting it here, it's going to have no wind blockage is always the problem with your windmill. So having it over here, all these houses are probably going to make it a very slow windmill. The other thing I could do is just put it over here now and make this windmill row, and then they'll all run kind of slow. You can see right now that one's already red. That one's like yellow or gold color. Let's see what this one is. I also have two more squares down here that I could use toward the water. The other thing that's kind of difficult right now is my products come in and kind of spurts. So like all of a sudden I'll have 10 or 20 sugar canes. I'm like, oh no, I've got to turn on a windmill to do sugar canes. And then next I see, oh, I got 20 or 30 brine in here. I need to turn on a windmill to do salt. So it takes a while to kind of get all your crops balanced where they flow into your silos and then you mill them at the proper speed so that everything kind of goes in and out at the same pace. And that's why you need more than one silo, because once they get full of 20, things tend to get out of balance. Like that one's full right now. And see, if I had that other windmill there, that would be helping it. And that's why I need to rebuild now my other windmill. So one other problem I'm having here is I had a lot of crude piled up. But when I added the power plant, it started sucking in the crude and making those batteries. And I didn't really intend for that to happen. So when you first add your power plant, you might want to go to craft and turn it off. Like I said, you're still getting energy just because it's physically next to the refinery. So right now, I'm having to go back and forth really quick because you can see I'm I'm really down to like no gas right now, and I'll need if I don't make my deliveries, then my little storehouses will fill up, and then the products will be wasted basically. So now I got to convert it back and forth. I now I did like three or four petroleums, which takes like eight crude if I have four petroleums, and now I'm going to make gas, which takes more energy and thus a little bit more time, but it only takes one petroleum. So now you can look here and say, okay, I have 
six petroleum, so I should be able to make six cans of gas right now. And again, I, I would set a timer uh, to come back and check this and say five, seven, eight minutes. You just kind of need to figure out how long each gas can takes and then multiply it out times however many petroleums you have here. Okay, so we're going to come back to this. Now that windmill's going. See, he's already red. He was yellow, I think. I don't know. So I'm just going to put my other uh, windmill either here or here. I don't think it's going to matter. And they're all going to be red here shortly. So the only way to get around that is just basically keep building more windmills. This is another thing that can happen. Like right here, see this one's has four out of six sugar cane. And right now I have no sugar cane in any of my silos. So here I'm paying $50 a minute for that windmill to sit there until two more sugar canes come in from down here, which is going to take a minute and 33 seconds, plus however long the farmer takes to get it into the silo and then get from the silo over here. So that's another thing to kind of be careful about. Don't try to be milling products that aren't there unless you have, again, this kind of continuous flow going on where the flow is more important to you than your... If you have over $100,000 up here, $50 a minute is probably not that relevant to you. But if you're really low on money, then that's something you need to watch. But I could be milling the next important item here, which is, seems to be brine right now. Instead, it's just sitting there waiting on these two sugars to come. I got my little guy here making lumber in my mill. I need to stop him. I'm supposed to do craft stop. I already got, I think, 11 lumber piled up. And I, I'm lucky, I'm lucky it did not give me a wood shortage. I also upgraded this wood shed here to the big lumber yard. Eventually, maybe I'll do this one. It's nice to have that extra space and only use as few as possible. The lumber yard's 50,000. This one's pretty cheap. It's five or 10 for a wood shed. So yeah, you could add three or four wood sheds, but that's going to take up tiles or blocks on your playing space. The other thing I was getting ready to do is add a chicken coop in here. So pretty soon I can start selling eggs and I want it next to water, but this is one of those cases where I wish I understood better where to put it. Like, does it have to be next to the lake or having it here diagonal to the lake? Is that good enough? Because eventually when the game proceeds, I'll probably have to get rid of these marshes. So this is where knowledge is power and I don't have the knowledge I need yet. So I'm going to put the chicken coop right there. And once it's built with the wood, we'll see how much water it's getting. Back to the gas, I'll, what I usually do is if within probably the next hour of the game, I'll probably build a second fuel storage tank, like over here, maybe right there. It's kind of off the, the road, which is not good. I think it creates pollution, so you don't want it close to your animals. So again, many different compromises, where to put everything. Remember I was telling you about my sugar issue over here? So see this guy, he's red now because I built this other windmill next to him. So in three minutes, he'll have the sugar milled. And if I don't have any more sugar by then, I need to remember to turn that off. So I'll set my uh, alarm timer for three minutes and I'll say like turn off sugar mill. Okay, so my chicken coop got built over here and see it got one out of one water. I'm not sure if that water is coming from the marshes or if it's coming from the lake. So eventually when I delete the marshes, we'll see if it still has enough water. I don't want people to waste their time watering things because that slows things down. So if, if, if and when I need to remove these marshes to make more room for other things, like another barn, then I'll have to reevaluate if that chicken coop is still getting enough water. So this will create eggs, and they really pile up faster than you think. It seems like they're kind of slow, but I remember last time I was playing, it just seems like, yeah, every every so often, every 10, 20 minutes, you get another 10 eggs to sell. You already have the feeders here, and they'll have to go to the trowel, which is maybe a little far away for them. But uh, maybe we could put another trowel here and another feeder or something, but right now it's not my priority in the game. It's just an extra item to make a little extra money. Okay, let's talk about sugarcane again for a second. I just put a sugarcane field here, 
And you notice it only has five out of eight waters. So basically I'll destroy that. That's just not going to be efficient. Right now the only two sugar canes I have are down here. And they're just growing very slow. And I, I have two suspected reasons for that. One could be the shade of these houses. Or the other one is they're close to the water, to the, to the ocean over here. Maybe that affects them. So to actually even get to get these to grow, I had to have water on both sides. It seems like two lakes or ponds next to a sugar field wasn't enough. It needs either three, it needs like two side by side and either one or two diagonal as well. So here, even though I had two marshes and a pond, you can see that only gave it uh, a fraction of the water that it needed. And like I said before, having things watered just takes forever. So if I want more sugar in the future, I think I'm going to have to build a lake here, lake here, I keep on, I mean ponds, and maybe put the two sugar fields here. When I played in uh, the forest by a river once, the river made everything very lush along the river. But I think that's the difference between an ocean and a river. The ocean is not necessarily good water, it's salt water, and that can hurt your crops. So it'd be interesting to see if I had a here, two lakes side by side, how much faster the sugar would go, grow. But to do that, I'd have to move my wheat and, again, sacrifice something to, to build something else. But the wheat here was growing just fine. So I did have wheat there before. I'm just going to go back and put the wheat back there. It just costs a little money to destroy and recreate these crops. You don't want to do that at the beginning of the game. But again, when you have a little more money in the middle of the game, you still don't want to do it if you have that knowledge. But Sometimes you have to, to to gain knowledge. The other thing that's interesting is how the wheat gets directed into different silos. Like all the wheat's over here, so originally I only had one silo, and they were taking it over here, which is good because of the animals. They need the wheat for the feed mills. But lately I noticed a lot of them are taking this road over here, and now they're bringing some of the wheat here, even though this silo is not even full. We've got six out of 20 items in it. So now we're piling up a little wheat down here, which I didn't have before. So that means I need like one of these windmills now to do wheat. And if the sugar ever started piling up again, I would need one to do sugar. But the sugar doesn't pile up very fast. It takes here two or three minutes to grow. So that means I'm only getting six sugars about every nine to 12 minutes. And so I only need to make or manufacture with the windmill, sugar one out of every 12 minutes. But if that keeps coming in at that rate and the windmill takes three minutes to do it, you kind of have to do the math on the, the time there as well. I think I may have an overabundance of trees right now. So actually what I'll probably do is get rid of this like tree here and I'll put a sugar there. And I'll increase my sugar production. You can see it's two minutes, 30 some seconds to get the sugar grown. No watering needed because it's touching those lakes. Right now I'm basically saving up to buy a bakery, which is 200,000. So I'm trying not to spend too much money except maybe paving a few roads. It looks like maybe these two spaces for sure would need a road. Pretty heavy down. This whole road here is pretty heavily traveled. See that keeps those that keeps the farmers a little bit faster. I think my my last game I didn't have enough roads early in the game. I didn't realize how much it speeded them up. Because if those little guys have to walk through the grass, it takes them forever to get back and forth. And then the dirt road speeds them up, and then of course the paved road will speed them up even more. And they have to walk around these houses here too. So see if I got rid of one of these houses and extended this road two more. That would be good, but then where am I going to put this house? Looks like I have two spots over here, so that's something I'm probably going to do next. So that house got basically moved over here, and then if I got rid of this house, it would probably solve the shading on that sugar cane right there as well. So pretty soon I should plan on moving it over here. The other thing to do is eventually start converting my farmer's houses to tractors. And then I can put the tractor here and then blow away this farmer's house. You can start doing that when you have enough money and when you have enough lumber. 
to me right now, the cakery is, I mean, the bakery is a little more important than speeding up the farmers. Why? Because the bakery can sell more expensive things like butter and dough. And now that I'm creating tons of salt, I think making butter would be pretty easy because I've got the milk here and I got the salt coming in here. So making butter would be a good product to make for the next uh, 30, 40 minutes or an hour before I go on to higher level products. But first I need to get up to here. First I need to get up to the 200,000 for that. Once again, this poor refinery here, like see now I left it running too long and I ran out of petroleum, right? So now it's waiting on a petroleum and it'll never get one because I need the refinery to make petroleum. So that's why in some games I used to have two refineries. I could make like petroleum in one and gas in the other and then it wouldn't get stuck like this. So when it's stuck, you have to basically do craft, stop, and that empties everything in there. So you lose a little bit of product and all your energy that was put into it. And now you have to come back and say, okay, now I need to create petroleum, which will take these 14 crude oils and, to, and create seven petroleums out of that. Go back here now, shift to petroleum, and let it crank for a while. I just put a builder house over here because this is the next section I'm going to be building out more. So having the builder here it means he doesn't have to run all the way from over here. So now I can either remove or just keep that one. Later I can reclaim that spot if I need it. But for now, I'll just have both of them there. Except I guess having two of them will cost me a little more money. So if I'm short on money, I might want to just destroy that house. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blow away this windmill here. I could turn it on, but look how far he has to go to get his supplies. He has to go all the way over here. And you see there's not a lot of crops there. And then over here, we have a lot of things that need to be manufactured. But it's just too far, I think, to go across the screen like that or to go through all these roads to get there. So the travel time is too great. Originally, I think I had it over here. Maybe then I moved to here. But originally in the, in the game, as I've said before, I like to have my windmills far apart to get them cranking faster so they're in the green mode. But now... In this part of the game, I think it's more important to have them close to the silos. Every game you play is going to have these different rocks across the screen. So far, I have not invested any money in destroying the rocks. I'd like to, but it's $40,000 to do that. So I don't do that until I have a lot more money available. That's why, for instance, this road just kind of deads in on the rock there. Eventually, it might come down here further. Or I could do an L shape here and then have it come down here, that might be a good plan, actually, to put a road right up, right through here. That's going to destroy the marsh, which might affect the watering of these crops, and then I'd have to put a pond, it just kind of you know, water, the stuff rolls downhill, as they say. So I don't want to do that yet, because like I said, I'm still saving up for a bakery. So if I do all those improvements now, I won't have the cash for the bakery. I'm going to end this video here. In the next video in this series with Neil Town 4, I'll make my bakery. And before I do that, I just want to tell you, you need $200,000. And of course, you need some lumber, which I already have. But I would actually pile up probably 230 to 240 maybe even 250 before I build the bakery. So I'm just kind of in what I call boring mode right now. I'm just going to keep selling things, let things run. And just get my money up a little bit higher. Try not to spend anything unnecessarily. And, and then in the next video, I'll talk about how the bakery works. And I hope you find that more interesting. And it, this is, again, a day two of this game. Um, you know, obviously, it depends how many hours a day you play it. But I'm really not pushing it hard this week. Last week, I stayed up till past 1 a.m. a couple nights. Just trying to like, oh, i got to get this cake redone. Or i, I got to bake my first cake or whatever. And I just kind of like wore myself out. So this week, I'm not going to compete. And uh, I was so close to being in the top 500 last time. This time, I'm not even in the top 1,000 yet. So we'll see if I get up there. There could be more people playing this week. Or it just be, could be because I got a late start. And then I've been doing other work and stuff. That's, I don't play it constantly all day long. So to be competitive, <clears throat> that's some things you have to keep in mind. So I hope this video has taught you some concepts. 
and ideas for you to try in your games. This is Neil Walters with NeilsVideos.com and BitcoinBuffaloes.com. We'll see you in the next Poundstar video or any other of my good videos about cryptocurrency.